Do you have mothers? Do you have daughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, like any female counterpart that means anything to you that you you're breaking my heart, sugar. Who is it that we need men's protection from other than other men? Say you got to work it out. Say you got to work it out. Let's see what shakes loose. <laughs> now, let's turn on the juice and see what shakes loose. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, the wireless woman. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi Fi's, welcome back to yet another transmission of the wireless woman. I don't have time to dance around and do intros for y'all today. I got something we got to get into, but before we do, do me a favor on your way in and like this video. You know, if you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure you don't forget to subscribe. Share this content with other people and leave me some comments so that I can engage with you there. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell for notifications when I upload new content and when I go live. Remember, Wednesday, Wireless Wednesdays at 8. I will see you then. I will see you there live. But until then, today I have something that I want to speak on. And <laughs> even though I'm getting much more comfortable in front of my microphone, and bringing you a lot more episodes. I have been super lighthearted in my life, but like when I get on here, I always have something like super serious to talk about, and today is no different. Why do you bring this rage to my doorstep? There are blood on the leaves. Blood on the leaves. I just need to clear my mind out. And I want to talk about it. So. A few days back, my 17-year-old daughter saw her first eggplant up close in real life. Now, I'm not going to say it's the first one she's ever seen, cause, but it was unsolicited and uninvited and in 2022 like why are we still having to deal with things like that my daughter had gone to a store and she was sitting in her car on the phone being oblivious and unaware as most teenage girls are and I will caution you my daughter does look older more mature for her age and I do as a woman get tired of having to police her image so that she appears more age appropriate um because honestly I don't think that would stop the issues that she has but where is all this policing for the males and these are not <laughs> the young children like her, that you would expect to be making the mistake. It's the grown, gray beard, hanging left ball, he stream sounding like skates falling down concrete stairs because their prostate is enlarged, black toenail having old men that are harassing <laughs> my 17 year old daughter. So she's sitting there in her car when a man pulls out his genitalia and proceeds to, to really terrorize my child. Now, I can honestly say as a mom, like, I mean, she came home traumatized, all right? I can honestly say as a mom, I feel, especially with her not having had her father in her life to the extent that a father should be. 
I can honestly say that I feel I have done a very good job of protecting my child, of keeping a certain amount of a child's innocence intact. But this whole breakdown in the gender dynamics, it's like people forget that it's affecting children, that children are growing up in the environment that we are creating. And these people that I'm meeting, this 40, 30 year old group of people have thrown off all restraint when it comes to sexual gender dynamics. Here's the thing I already know, because I can hear the collective male pathology saying, Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. Well, you don't want to be independent. You don't want to be protected. This is what happens. Who are we being protected from? Who is it that we need men's protection from other than other men? Men need protection from men. So what would make you think women don't? Do you have mothers? Do you have daughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, like any female counterpart that means anything to you that you can't see this lack of male restraint, this patriarchy, this narcissism, the effect that it is having on the the females, the, the women. And what's so crazy is when you see the reflection of it back at you when you see women acting out of this because there was a time when men were only about money go listen to our rap music how it glorifies money clothes and hoes all a brother knows but then when you see it coming back when you sent that echo out and you hear it reverberating back to you and your women all of a sudden now we're off the chain we're we're unrestrained but when it was you <laughs> When it was you in the videos, when it was you creating that male black culture, when it was you that was niggas with an attitude, boys in the hood, did you think that made us proud? Did you think when you were selling crack to your own community that we didn't want to jump on platforms and media and say that? All white men are better than black men. We had that option as well. But we stayed loyal. I was listening to a content creator. His channel's called Vanity, I believe, who was talking about the breakdown between black men and black women. I felt like it was balanced. Clearly, he's a male, a man, and he's going to give a different perspective than what I would. But he did bring light. Because the numbers show that most of y'all don't want to date a white man, which I can respect that. Black women are fiercely loyal to the black man. But you have to change your standard. A lot of black men are not getting educated, and I think black men need to get more education. But it, I felt like I, I could add to what he was saying, but I definitely couldn't refute it because he did see both sides and presented both sides. And he also presented a certain side of it that I can't because I'm not a man. Just like if I were having the discussion, I would have presented certain things from a female's perspective, a woman's perspective that he would not have necessarily known or thought to bring into his argument. I think we as Black people can have conversations that are not monolithic and still be able to elevate the perspectives of each other. Ain't that right? Amen. But I was listening to his channel and he was talking about the need for men to take over that policing work. You know, we as women are impervious at this point to being policed by men because of the lack of trust. Because we have been given the keys, if you will, to the to the black kingdom. And more often than not, those are handed back over to white people. More often than not, we're sold back in the capitalism, back in the patriarchy, back into these systems that fail us by the men that are endowed with not just the ability, but the responsibility to build this community. So 
this type of behavior, I wish I could have a conversation with my daughter and say, this is, you know, atypical. This is not what to expect. This is a sick man who has a sickness and it is, and it is. But this type of behavior is becoming so mainstream. You know, you listen to the music. And at this point, you can't even call where we are, like our contribution as women to the culture, sex work. Like we're worse than sex workers now because at least sex workers get paid in exchange for their physical bodies. I mean, the, here access to women is literally just a click of your hand away. But here's someone who felt the need to take the innocence of a child. When it comes to people who do stuff like that, flashers and molesters and people who um people who essay other people, they do it for the thrill, for the shock. So these are not going to be people who are gratified just by the physical act. They want to induce fear and terror and shock. They want to create a victim with that type of behavior. It's about a power dynamic for them. So this isn't meant to say that all men who are completely sexually incontinent, all these whores are the same as these psychopathic people, are the same as these sick, mentally ill people, however it is to say that we're making some things mainstream that never should have been. Which mm -hmm. becomes like a phenomenon to me because I don't like white people and I'm afraid of black men, right? When it comes to the regard, the use of a woman's body and mind, because what this person did was intended to plant a psychological terror and fear into a woman, into my child. I, I'm pretty sure he probably did not think that my daughter was a minor. But still, you got OnlyFans. You got porn on your phone. You can find the female image anywhere you want to find it. It's catered to you. They got gangbangs. They got like whatever you're into, Asian, anal. You can find anything that you want and it is still not enough and I am dismayed by it and it's weird because I talk to men all the time who feel like the genders are completely equal but I could say it right now on here if a woman walks up to you and flash you if you just walking by in a parking lot and a woman's in a car with her pants around her ankles just going to town just just doing it up as a man, I can't think of too many men. I could be wrong. Please comment down below if I'm wrong. If you're a man watching this and listening to this, and you would be utterly, utterly offended by this, please let me know. If you as a man being flashed by a woman would just utterly offend you, if it would terrorize you if you would go home and have nightmares about it and I know what some of y'all gonna say well it depends on the woman it, hmm, yeah. but my point is we live in a patriarchy we live in a world where men have male privilege and women go against their own best interests by pacifying these behaviors by going along with this sexual revolution and making our bodies as plain and as common as applesauce. Like it's just something you can go out and get and purchase and it's not enough. There's not enough BBLs. There's not enough BBW. There's just there's not enough of anything we can be and do for these men that is going to actually pacify them. And and I'm 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 out here. I'm in these dating waters. Like I said, it's boy boycott because I I ain't letting nobody get me off this shelf unless it makes sense. But there are literally men who refuse to spend any money, take you out, invest in you, 
any of that, but still require and expect sex. It is worse than being a sex worker. I hear you almost can't even sell this where we at. I had a whole argument about it, dude, because he was like, well, I don't want to take you out on a day. I was like, well, we can meet in a park. Like, we are lowering the bar. I said, we can meet in a park, you know, just for the sake of meeting. You can make sure I look like my pictures. I can make sure you look like yours. We can talk to each other and see what type of vibe we have, see if going out on a date is worth it. These people, like, come to my house. <laughs> Okay, so you don't feel comfortable taking me out on a date, but you feel comfortable with me knowing where you live and coming to your house. There is no sense in a man's mind <laughs> that he is not safe at all times. No way. You would bring a stranger to your home. You don't know me well enough to date me, but you know me well enough to sleep with me. The amount. <laughs> The amount of peen pics that I get just randomly sent to my DMs is no different than what happened to my daughter the other day. How do you as a woman and as a mother prepare your girls for this generation of men and even men who used to be the protectors? There used to be a father that would be like, hey, watch out for these boys. All they do is lie. All they do is, all they're trying to get is your panties. They're trying to get your panties down around your waist or pull to the side if there's not enough time for that. This is all they want. This used to be the voice of men. And and even they have lowered the bar down to, well, I mean, it's not all men. I mean, you know, maybe you misunderstanding it. You being overdramatic and looking too much. This is weird. That something that's got to be so precious, it has to be precious. It has to be precious to be this sought after. But people won't even protect it. People protect their money and their dogs. I had a dog stolen one time. It was a rare breed dog. People protect their money and their dogs more than their women and children. And that's just weird to me that we're expected to be a man's pleasure, a man's peace, take care of them when they old, do all of these things, but we don't even have enough value to them for our minds and our bodies to be sacred. And here's the thing, I can't put that on them. The purpose of this video was for us as women to have this discussion because I placed this on us. We have placed the bar in hell. We did this. And we refuse to pick up a standard. I mean, even at Chick-fil-A, it's their pleasure to serve you, but you got to pay them for that service. There's nowhere anyone can go and be served, waited on hand and foot like that and not pay. And y'all have done this with your boyfriends that ain't even husbands, with your husbands that made a vow and a pledge to honor and cherish and protect you. And ain't doing it. You've done this with sons and set them up to go out into the world to make women victims of their passion, make women really little more than what you have shown them the value of what a woman is. Because what they really want is their moms, women who acquiesce to them, cook, clean for them, take care of them, accept them in all their wrongs, love them unconditionally. They want their mothers. And a lot of love that many of them maybe didn't get from mothers, but, but they want that in the form of a woman that fulfills all of their sexual and fleshly desires and the truth of the matter is more often than not that hole is too big for any one woman to feel the hole that's emotionally in women the emotional hole in women is the same as the sexual hole in men and it's both an emotional thing it's an emotional disconnect on both sides and men having lost I don't know if they ever had it, but having lost connection to their own divine femininity, their 
feminine side is causing them to come after that in you. And because they're hyper masculine, they want to deny you the ability to have your yin and yang balanced, your light and dark balanced, because a woman should have both feminine and masculine energy. That's where our standards and our boundaries come from. That's where we set the expectation of what it is that men are supposed to do. We can't make men treat us properly. We can't force them to do it. That's not what the masculinity is there for. The masculinity is there to provide a guide and a protection and a consistency for you. It is the self-love for you. That's your masculinity. Just like a man's femininity is the self-love for him. Cleaning under his nails, wiping the cold out of his eye, having good hygiene, taking a pumice stone to his feet, taking care of himself, looking at the food and diet that he ingests in, eating healthy things, meditating, therapy, prayer. Those feminine elements, when a man incorporates them into his life, it makes him feel more balanced. It makes him feel more loved. It makes him feel more at peace. And it will cause a man to raise his standards for what type of woman that he wants. And if these men start doing the things that we have asked them to do and raise their standards, there's some women that are going to be noticeably lacking. Because a man that's at peace with himself instead of looking for you to be his peace is not going to let a low vibrational woman disturb said peace. You're not going to use somebody yadi yadi and get him. You're going to have to actually bring something to the table. Most of us as women get off on having so much more over these men. It actually is the reverse of what they used to do to us back in the day. We know they actually need a place to stay and we the only one that got it. We know they don't have the life skills to go out here and make it on their own. We got the education. We got the housing, access to resources. So then it becomes a situation of, well, he need me. He ain't going to never meet anybody like me. I ain't going to be, baby, elevate yourself. Get some standards for yourself because he'll always be able to get someone like you. That's the problem. He wasn't supposed to get you. <laughs> you should be able to see your flex is that a low vibrational man hadn't got to you, hadn't put his hands on you. Maybe I done had some low vibrational men get me, but they ain't going to get me again. Got me, but they ain't going to get me back. Because it's about making sure that at each step, you yourself are growing in that healing space. Whenever you're wounded, you have to grow new skin. And in that place where that new skin is coming in, you can create a new skill in yourself. You can create a new boundary. I don't know if you can see this. I think maybe you can. The lights are really. But if you look at my right hand, I look like some type of prize fighter. I got this scar right here from when I fell off my bike. I got stitches down my pinky right here from an accident. I've got stitches right. Well, this one was where some glass from the accident came out of my finger right here. When it heals, it pushes the glass out. They couldn't go in and get it. So they had to get stitches all down my knuckles. I was holding, I was gripping the steering wheel and the whole windshield came in on me. Yeah several near-death experiences. And I'm going to start doing some story times on here so I can share some of them with you. You might find them interesting. I don't know. But if you were to look at my hand, you would swear I am some type of prize fighter. Like I've been beating, beating bitches teeth in or something like that for a living. But um, no, I just, I survived a lot of things. And the thing about scar tissue is, it creates a barrier where the wound is, but it never actually heals. It'll always bleed inside. It'll always remind you of where you were, but it also reminds you of the resilience that you had to come from a wound that deep that it will actually bleed forever, but that your body has a mechanism, a protective mechanism to heal itself 
Like I said, you cut it open right now, the wound's still there. That's that's why the scar tissue looks different than regular tissue when it heals over. Like I've got some burns here, but they healed over regular. But then that smooth, shiny skin, that's the scar tissue. If you cut it open, the wound's still there. Never healed. Never healed. It just covered over. And this is the character of who you are. You incorporate it. You incorporate the shadow man and you let those things that you've overcome make you stronger. That was the lesson that I had to give for my daughter is, unfortunately, this is also who men are. There are men that will love you, honor you, protect you. But there are men who will victimize you, who are not what they appear to be, who are predators, predatory people that will prey on you. And you have to be vigilant for that as well. You have to look around. You have to look up and look around. And that's a lesson for all women. Any man that wants you to believe that men are inherently good, that there is no evil in the world are grooming you. Cause even they know that's not true. If there weren't bad men in the world, why do men carry guns? They carry guns more proportionately than we do. They're victims and perpetuators of gun violence, even more than we are, even though we're in intimate relationship with them. Explain that. Men are dangerous. <laughs> Prisons are full of them and there's no need for you to have to be foolish enough to lose all diligence about yourself in order to have one. A man comes along to augment your protection of yourself and he doesn't want no healthy man that I know of wants a woman that's defenseless, powerless, silent, because then you become a woman that any man can have. And that isn't precious. People like Balenciaga, because not just everybody can have that. People like BMW or Benz or Beamer or Audemars, whatever the stuff is, because not just anybody can have that. And you can be that. But you have to have the same sense about yourself that Gucci had. You have to decide that who you are, who you are and what you produce is more important than what other people see, than what other people may think it is. That's how you raise the value of something. When Facebook started, it's like, I mean, my space was the thing. But you have to have vision, Willie. Well, I respect your ambition, Willie, but you got to have vision. You have to see yourself bigger than where you are right now. You cannot let. And, and I said it in one of my videos. I said you got to have a little bit of narcissism in you to overcome a narcissist. You, women, we got to start thinking we better than this type of treatment. If you don't think you better than being a late night booty call for a dusty toe jam raggedy just eye crust lip goo man that none of us is better than the other don't get me wrong I'm not trying to make it seem like I have this air of superiority over anybody else, but I'm definitely better than somebody that don't see no value in me. I'm definitely better than someone that can't treat me like something. I'm definitely better than being next to the type of man that would go out and do something like what happened to my daughter, all these men. And see, here's the thing is black women, we're still supporting these men. I think something's going on right now. You know, I care less. I could not care less. You know, I could not care less, but there's something going on. I think with uh, Kelly Rowland and Chris Brown or whatever, and she defended them off. So I don't know, but my point in what I'm saying is we as black women have continued to support men that we know are perpetuators of domestic violence that we know have committed sexual assaults, Trey songs and all these different people. We have Put these men in those positions. These women come to these hotel rooms. These women come to these parties. And that's not to say that 
it's all women. It's not to say that because you're in a compromising situation, you should be victimized. But my point and what I'm saying is after all these things happen, we have continued to put the onus of responsibility on women and support these men in that state. You know, Oprah came to the defense of Harvey Weinstein and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's mammy space. It really is. And it feeds, it feeds women to the patriarchy when we don't stand up and defend one ourselves and two each other to the raggedy dirty dick dusty ball bastard that pulled his penis out i hope you choke i hope your your mama toe itch for the rest of her life i really hope that you go to wipe and every time you wipe there's still poop on the toilet paper i hope you musty even after you put deodorant on i mean i can go i can go but my point is do you do right by me it's a lot of men out here <laughs> and until you do right by us women everything you even think of is gonna crumble and it's gonna fail do you do right by me everything you even think about gonna fail and that's all I got for you. That's the best that I can do. That's the best thing that I can tell you for those of y'all that's asking me how we can fix it until you do right. My old woman, you're going to continue out here in these streets. You're going to be walking around barefoot in these streets. But I also hope that your trifling ass is walking around barefoot in these streets. Look out. Until you do right by the women that God entrusts you to protect to profess love and kindness over, to provide for. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji if you see what I'm seeing, feel, feel and see as I'm seeing. <laughs> but if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek, <laughs> I want to hear about it in those comments until the next transmission. Class is dismissed.